1905. Stop eating so much, says the grandmother. You'll die before me. The arts are so important in the lives of a child because they need to have something that they feel good about. We're from Morehead State University. We're the little company, and we welcome you to Einstein's Dreams. This is an opportunity for them to try any medium of art and find something that they can express themselves and can excel in and have a sense of accomplishment because there is n absolutely nothing more beautiful than a child feeling like they have a sense of accomplishment for what they've created. And, um, and that is magical. The Little Company is an educational um, theater tour company that travels around the state bringing uh, shows and workshops to uh, middle schools and high schools in the state of Kentucky, especially in our service region for Moorhead State University. I took it from, I changed from being an elementary school show to a middle school, high school, because, well, for two reasons. One, I wanted the company to be a recruitment tool for the university theater department. And then I also did not want to compete with tour companies that have elementary tours, Lexington Children's Theater, Stage One out of Louisville, Cincy Shakes. Uh, a lot of those, uh, Kentucky Opera, a lot of those have elementary tours that travel around the state. That's the first thing that I changed. Then I also changed from doing um, original work to um, published material and that um, has made a huge difference in the quality. Uh, we took the tour show and put it as a main stage show in the fall and then it, it is on tour adapted and then goes out on tour in the spring so uh, many of the students that are involved in the main stage show go out on tour but we usually have a separate audition for those. 23 April 1905. In this world it is instantly obvious that something is... I did not want to originally do Little Company at all. I heard that they toured to school systems and I thought, oh my God, that sounds terrifying. I auditioned anyway because I've actually worked with Octavia in the past. I used to live in Moorhead when I was younger and I did her children's theater at that point in time. Um, and I thought, well, I really enjoyed working with her then, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do it because I don't believe in not auditioning for things. I had a few schools in mind, but after I saw the little company come and perform um, and I knew that they went on tour, I thought that was pretty cool because I don't think there's a lot of schools that do that with their theater program and I wanted to go out to different schools and be able to perform. I was the assistant lighting designer last year and I got to watch um, Blaine Roberts, their lighting designer for that show. Um, I got to kind of watch him interact with Octavia and see his process and so I was really adamant last spring about applying to design for the fall um, Little Company show because I've seen it and I saw Octavia challenging Blaine and like saying to him things like, well, why do you think that, like, how was that relevant and like making him grow as a designer and as a person and seeing it differently than he would see it in general, I guess. And so working with the Little Company and Octavia has been challenging in like the, the positive way though, in the way that like you know this is a big show and Octavia expects a lot out of you, but she expects a lot out of you because she knows you can do it. So to me it was very refreshing and like just kind of a good growth experience. When I was a freshman I auditioned for The Little Company, uh, Mr. E of Imagination tells a Red Growl and Poe, 
and um, of course I heard that it was like a paying professional job and I thought that was a really incredible opportunity to be offered as a freshman so I auditioned for it. Um, I loved it, it was really cool, I liked the whole style of theater behind it because Octavia is a very unique director as we can tell from Einstein's dreams and her style of blocking and directing is just fascinating to me and it's beautiful and I really loved that aspect about it and then so after I did that show I not only fell in love with doing the show but I also fell in love with the workshops and the, the enrichment that we brought to the students of the Kentucky region around here, you know. I did it my sophomore year too and I just loved it again. We, were, we did a, This Is Not a Pipe Dream and I was Renee Magritte and I just thought that was really awesome and I just kept falling in love with it more and more and it was just like an ongoing affair that I felt like I was having with this entity, you know, and it was just really awesome. And it just continued to just grow every single year that I did it and I got closer and closer with Octavia. She has provided me so much um, wisdom. She's taught me so many life lessons. She's helped me grow as a person, grow as a performer, grow as an artist, anything I can name. Um, and I just love the little company. I think it's wonderful what we get to do for students in the area that may not get to experience theater. I think it's a wonderful opportunity for students to get professional theater experience under their belt before they even graduate from here. She doesn't discriminate. Like It doesn't matter how long you've done theater, how short you've done it. She gives everybody a fair chance. When I read Einstein's Dreams, I was totally taken by the beauty um, that is written in that play. Um, and I also was very interested in the challenges of directing such a show. And I also try to find shows that are going to be interesting and educational to high school students. Um, and I've thought that most people would be familiar with Einstein and, um, and I just felt like it would be a great show to take on tour, plus the challenges that it offered uh, not only myself as a director but the students that were working on the show I felt like would just be kind of one of those once in a lifetime things. It's not a typical play. It's not your normal start to finish. There's um, 17 scenes and each of those scenes has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Um, and so Octavia calls this more of a movement piece. Um, and I would say it's a little more on the artsy fartsy side of theater. And um, a lot of people are scared by that. They get weirded out because it's not what they're used to. It's a little out of the norm. I hope what the audience can get out of this is a mind stretching experience, like that they open up their mind and think about the world maybe a little differently and about art a little differently. That not everything is uh, realism or um, just a straight play. Uh, it's not all musical. Sometimes it's this weird movement piece that Octavia has created out of this show and um, I personally really enjoy it because I don't have a lot of experience in that type of theater. I hope that the audience takes away from this show that anything is possible. Um, that you can be creative and step outside the comfort zone um, and be as free as you want to be and you can also be an artist and a science person and put them together and come up with some really interesting things. Having 20 scenes in the show that are completely different, that completely stand on their own um, and tell a different story. <clears throat> so it's like doing 20 small shows as far as directing goes uh, and then being original with each one of those scenes. Um, it also was a challenge to bring in some of the elements that I was interested in, like the flying and the um, stilt walking and juggling and uh, unicycle riding and the, the unique use of props in the show with the silks and the hula hoops and um, all of the various things that we use in the show. As a traveler approaches this place from any direction, a lot, not necessarily vocally, not necessarily emotionally, uh, physically, more than anything. Uh, my greatest weakness 
going into the show was my physicality on stage, becoming confident with my movements and gestures, not keeping them in my little nice speech box. There's no little box in Einstein dreams. You're everywhere, you're on top of people, you're under people. It's getting acquainted to that level of physicality in a show has been my biggest challenge. Almost everything is new to me, like, you know, design-wise. Um, the, the big thing I'm really looking forward to is the giant clock skirt, which she showed you earlier. That, even when um, I was thinking about it at first, I had no idea how we were going to do this, but I just knew that if it had a good structure and stuff, maybe it'd be able to lift over her head, but then um, after some conversations with Becky and Octavia, we've transformed it into a bigger skirt and then essentially the flying the actor will be involved as well. Like I said, Octavia really stretches you. I mean she will push and push and push until she gets what she what she wants out of you. And a lot of times that can be disheartening because she'll be like, no I'll do it again. You're not doing it right. No I'll do it again. I just you, you have it in you. Come on, you can do it. And so you'll just kind of be like, ah oh, yeah, why can't I get this? And but the moment that you do get it, it's like Ah, oh, now I understand. And you've, you've grown as an actor in that moment. For me, the most difficult was, um, I don't have good hand-eye coordination. So the most difficult for me was learning stage directions and being able to do those on stage um, and look natural doing it. Like when you're moving this giant eight-foot piece across the stage, you have to look like it's part of the show and that was hard for me to do, but I got it down. I don't by any means consider myself to be like a grade A dancer by any means, <laughs> but I always love to dance and I love to move and I think it's exciting to see where your body parts can take you and I actually have to give some credit to Natasha Davis, our dance professor here, because she did an exercise with us in my modern dance class where we learned like if you stand in one place, where can your hand take you and your ear and your head and all that stuff, you know? And I wanted to bring that to the people in Einstein's because I thought that fit just perfectly with the kind of style of movement that Octavia was going for for the show. So I taught that to them and I helped, I think that really helped them to move through the space. But with that being said, that was also a challenge for me because I don't consider myself to be a choreographer either. So that was a kind of a whole brand new thing that I had never done. But I kind of just would meet with the with Thaddeus and meet with Sahara and I'd be like all right let's just all move let's just see what we discover you know and I would try something that I felt worked show it to them if they liked it they would say yes if not we would explore something different I was really big on them making sure that they were comfortable with how their bodies were moving also and how they looked because I feel like that's your number one thing as a dancer which I've also learned from Natasha is just being confident like if you're confident it'll look good and if you're not you can tell and it's not gonna feel right. So working with the little company Octavia has been challenging in like the the positive way though in the way that like you know this is a big show and Octavia expects a lot out of you but she expects a lot out of you because she knows you can do it so to me it was very refreshing and like just kind of a good growth experience working with someone like Octavia who's like yes or no and she's very firm about how what her ideas are and helping you see her ideas while she actually while she still gets your ideas in. So it was like very fun seeing me grow. Practical experience. It's an opportunity for them to see what it's like to do um, or be involved with a tour company. And, and that is such a, a rare thing in colleges. You know, there's a few colleges around the state that are around the country that offer this kind of experience. Moorhead State is the only one that has anything like this in Kentucky. Um, but it kind of mirrors how other tour companies work for professional companies. And so it's, it's an opportunity for them to see if it's something that they're gonna like. Plus, if they're interested in doing theater education or children's theater, you know, we offer that workshop after the show is over, and so they also get teaching experience. And all of that is practical application. It's just, you know, you can learn so much in a classroom, but once you get in front of actual students, it's a whole nother ball game. If you want to search professional theater jobs, I don't think there is better experience in this department 
in this region, really, than getting on tour every week, loading up a bus, unloading the bus, putting on performances all of the time, sometimes two and three in one day. And just having that kind of mobility is incredibly important for any actor who wants to make that jump to getting paid to do it. Their first professional theater experience. Um, because if you go on tour, you are getting paid. It is a professional job. You can put that on your resume and say, yes, I got paid for this. Um, and it's run like a professional company. Octavia's not, uh, oh, you're in college, don't worry about it. No, she runs it like a business. Um, and a lot of times people forget that's what theater is, is it's a business. You're marketing yourself. You uh, got your job when you were casted. And we go full force. It's, it's hard, but it's so worth it and so fun. So I think Little Company teaches you um, what you can endure almost and what you should endure almost if this is what you want to do with your life. I think it teaches a lot of life lessons and values that needs to be taught for a theater individual. Working with Octavia in any form or fashion is a beautiful thing and working with a little company is a beautiful thing and as a lighting designer anyone who light designs for Octavia is going to have a lot of fun with it because her shows are like always very abstract and like stylized and very out there and so you as a designer get to ex get to explore your own creativity and like you don't have to make it look like you're in a living room you you know you can make it look like you're in a living room depending on the show but like you don't have to fit into the conforms of everyday realistic theater and so Little Company gives you that opportunity to really explore the abstract stylized idea which our other shows sometimes do that as well we don't always do realistic shows but Octavia shows are always very out there and very abstract. And so as a designer working for her, it's really fun getting into the ground and like filling it out and exploring and kind of feeding off each other and just kind of finding your own aesthetic. Because you don't realize you have your own aesthetic until you start seeing it versus other people's and then you realize, okay, you can see things a lot differently. I just would like to say that I just really love the little company. I love this department. I love everyone here. And I've loved my five years here. And being the assistant director for Einstein's Dreams was probably one of the best experiences that I've had here and one of my most memorable ones because I really feel a strong connection with that cast. I have a huge connection with Octavia Biggs. And uh, I just love it. The Moorhead State University has a great foundation that we build for the students that are interested in theater. We get you involved in all aspects of, uh, of the department and so it's not uncommon to see a freshman with a lead role in one of our shows. Uh, it's not uncommon to have all of the designers on our team for a production to be sophomores or juniors. So there's lots of opportunities for you to find where you excel most and what you enjoy most in our theater department.